Um, okay. Hi, UVic students. Uh, my name's Emily Lowen. I'm your UVSS Director of Campaigns and Community Relations. I'm here for another episode of MLA Candidate Interviews. Um, Rishi, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so it's uh, Rishi Sharma running for the BC Liberal Party in Saanich South. Uh, I'm currently working at the BC Construction Association on an equity, diversity and inclusion project. It's a secondment from the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Training. And so uh, essentially I'm trying to uh, reduce and eliminate bullying, hazing and harassment in the construction industry um, using government funding from the federal government and provincial government uh, and using different strategies uh, to, to work with employers, employees, union and business managers. Um, and yeah, it's, it's about it's about retention. We want we want to make sure those who come into the construction industry will stay in the construction industry. Okay, and yeah, just to get this again, you're the BC Liberal candidate for Saanich South, um, and this is just another little reminder for students to vote. Uh, you can still request your mail-in ballot up to October seventeenth, but you should be getting those in as soon as possible. Um, and advanced voting starts on the fifteenth. So we're gonna start with some rapid fire questions. Rishi, in, in like three words or less, what is a book that changed your life? A book that changed my life? Well, honestly, uh, recently it was about, it's, it was a health book. You know, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's not, it was a, I have colitis. So learn, learning about colitis and how I can actually reduce stress, as stress in, in my environment to ensure I live a healthy life. Um, so it's not nothing too, <laughs> nothing too academic. Um, uh, I read it and it's actually helped me uh, move forward with, uh, with healthy living. Awesome. Do you have a favorite coffee shop in uh, your riding? Cherries. Awesome. Um, sure. Are you a dog, a cat, or more of a, a goldfish kind of person? <laughs> I, I am a dog person. Uh, currently, I don't have a dog because I have three children and it became just a little too much of a burden on the family. And I wasn't giving him the love that uh, the love and respect that they deserve. But now my youngest is in is in kindergarten. And I'm looking to 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 get another dog. Great. Okay. So into the the real stuff here. Um, students okay. overwhelmingly understand that the climate emergency requires both an immediate and an effective response from all levels of government. I'm wondering what specific actions you'll take to ensure that BC meets the required milestones of at least a 45% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Uh, a laudable goal. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with the Minister of Climate Action uh, when I was the Chief of Staff uh, in, 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 in a government and I introduced the carbon tax, I uh, introduced carbon neutrality, um, I helped change the minds of those who didn't believe climate change um, wasn't real. And back, you know, that was uh, several years ago. And so if you can imagine how difficult that was, I think we need to continue on with the education and, and, and acknowledgement that this is real. And, uh, and we have to implement more measures like the carbon taxes, like emissions reduction products, like renewable energies. I'd like to work with First Nations industries to, to, to look at how we can... Um, use more renewable energy uh, initiatives to put it forward. There's a great geothermal, geothermal uh, heating system up in soup with the soup First Nations. Uh, I think, um, you know, working with industry, if we can, to reduce the emissions that they're, they're putting out, more funding with the federal government to look at innovative strategies and initiatives to get, uh, to get the, the emissions reductions down. A real hard, strong focus on moving forward with climate change. More youth, uh, more people who understand what climate change is doing into the into the public service, so those ideas can move forward and up to the politicians who need to hear them. Uh, believe it or not, that's where a lot of the ideas come from. Uh, as as a public servant, uh, moving these policy for, moving these policies forward, um, I know they're being acknowledged. Previously, being a chief of staff to about eight different ministers, um, and again, uh, the minister of environment I worked for, worked for, the minister of climate action I worked for. When those brilliant ideas came forward, we jumped on them and we moved. Um, the Climate Action Secretariat, more funding for the Climate Action Secretariat, working with the uh, Pacific Institute for Climate Solutions over at UVic, uh, adaptation strategies. I think there's so much we should be doing, but we're not putting it a big enough lens on that. So, you know, if elected, if I have the opportunity, 
working to really focus on those emissions reduction strategies and moving forward, electric vehicles, for example. Um, but it has to be a full spectrum of support from municipalities to the provincial government to the federal government. Um, and I want to get back to world leading initiatives. Uh, there's, there's something out there that we're, not, that we're not seeing and we're not doing. So let's get back to the scientists. I remember working with Dr. Andrew Weaver uh, when I was in government, learning from him on what we should do to move these, move these strategies forward. So uh, get out there, get a real focus, a real lens, and make sure, and make sure we're moving these initiatives forward. Thank you. Um, so if elected, are you committed to eliminating oil, gas, and LNG subsidies in BC? This is a question that we received from many of our students. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I just want to know your stance on, on subsidies. Um, I don't think we should be offering subsidies to businesses in general. Um, I think, though, we're looking at a difficult time right now with COVID, and I'm very concerned if we're not able to, to, to get funding for, uh, for services that we need, um, it could be very dangerous. And I, and I know that, you know, we, we were at a $200 million surplus. We're now at a $13 billion deficit. Uh, if elected with any of the government, we'll be over a $20 billion deficit. Now, I, I, say, I say I wouldn't remove them immediately. Um, do I think we need more renewable energy resources in British Columbia? Absolutely. Across the world, absolutely. Um, if those industries can help us find those, use them as transition fuels to get, to get more of these renewable energy resources out the door, that's what we should be doing. I had the opportunity to go to Dawson Creek um, when I was with the Minister of Environment uh, and visit a, uh, visit a wind farm out there. Amazing, amazing technology at that time. Um, watching the energy going back onto the grid uh, for them and then empowering everything around them. And again, the geothermal stuff that I had seen, tidal, tidal energy, like, um, sorry, I'm talking too long, I'm rambling. So sorry. yeah, that, that, yeah. Oh, hopefully that answers the question. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, just I can, I can see you moving me along. <laughs> under, I can talk under. for days on this stuff. So go ahead. Okay. Um, so UVic students have expressed a strong desire to create a more socially just province and current measures by municipalities to reduce systemic racism in police forces simply haven't solved the problem. Um, I'm wondering what specific changes you think should be made to the Police Act um, and in general to address systemic racism in policing. Uh, I'm part of and I've been asked to lead um, a new committee on reducing uh, racism and increasing diversity in the public service. Uh, Chief Delmanic, we are asking to try to be a part of that, that initiative. I think, you know, with my history of being a person of color, with the discrimination, I felt like this is something I'm very, very passionate about. And I'll try to, I'll try to keep my passion subdued a little bit on this. Um, we need action and we need action now. I'm the construction industry in, in Ontario. I'll give you an example. In one construction site, they found six nooses throughout three months. Nooses. You go to work and you see these nooses sitting there around where these black, uh, 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 black um, uh, members were working. And so, like, it's happening now, and I think it's ridiculous. I was born in 1975. The discrimination I dealt with back then, I never would have imagined that we'd still be dealing with this kind of crap today. And we are, and it makes me sick. It's horrible. So I want, for example, uh, with the legislature, uh, any legislation, any policies, any movement forward has to have an equity, diversity, inclusion lens coming forward. We can't just put policies out there without looking at this particular lens. Um, I want a strong, strong committee to move forward to look at what we need to do here provincially and how we can affect world leading change when it comes to diversity and inclusion. We have such a diverse population uh, in British Columbia. We, we have so many brilliant people of diverse backgrounds coming to British Columbia. Let's bring them all together. We can come to a solution. I know we can. I'm the only person of color, uh, only South Asian, running in all, on the whole island. We have Indo-Canadians up and down this island, and none of them want to put their name forward. They don't feel comfortable. We still feel subdued. We still feel like we're not confident enough to put our name forward. Um, and that's completely wrong. I did a little cooking show last night with my daughter, two of my daughters, and my nephew. And I asked them, how do you feel uh, about maybe being an MLA? Do you think you can? Of course they, of course they said yes. Yeah, I think about that. Yeah, I'd like to do that. If I was asked that question at that age, uh, growing up uh, in Saanich South, I would be like, are you kidding me? There's no way someone would vote for me. I'm brown. How could I possibly put my name out there? That's exactly what I would think. I grew up with Indigenous people. All my friends were Indigenous and, um, and we have to change. 
Sorry, <laughs> you're running. Again. I apologize. So, okay. committees, legislation, uh, thought provoking ideas. I want real conversations. I want uncomfortable conversations in British Columbia, and I want to lead those conversations. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we, we are running out of time here. So okay. let's try to, to keep our answers a bit shorter. Um, thank you, though. Um, so costs like tuition and housing continue to rise, while students incomes have dropped significantly during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, in a minute or less, how will you tackle the rising costs of education for post secondary students? Uh, rising costs of education is we need, a, again, a good lens on, on where we can move funding around through government to help give breaks to, to students. Um, I was the one who introduced uh, free textbooks online. I think more innovative, innovative solutions like that to keep costs down for, for students uh, is, is necessary and needed. Let's talk to, let's talk to students saying, what, what do we need to do to, to remove uh, increasing tuition costs? How can we get more student grants out there? How can we get more co-ops out there? How can we get more... Uh, uh, more apprentices. Apprentices doesn't have to be just for trades. Apprenticeships could, should be for, for all, all types of education. Let's, uh, let's earn while you learn as well. And then look for the federal government and provincial governments to continue to offer support. And, and, uh, and if we can look for a reduction, I don't know right now because we're $13 billion in a deficit, which we're going to be going to $20 billion in a deficit because of COVID. These are very interesting times. You got to have a COVID lens on everything you're doing, um, but we need to care about those who are going to lead us. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's you and your fellow students. Okay, thank you, Rishi. Is there a way that um, students can reach out to you if they have further questions? Yeah, you can, uh, on Facebook, it's Rishi Sharma for Saanich South. Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, Rishi underscore SS. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, you can get me there as well. And Rishi.Sharma at bcliberals.com. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thanks so much. And I know you, you said you're in Saanich South. Uh, we're very lucky to be here. Um, if you have the opportunity to come vote, I, I, I really think you, uh, well, I hope you, you, you think of me um, and give me an opportunity to see what I can do for you. Take some of the burden away from you and someone you can trust and who's going to be there to work for you. Thanks, Rishi.